In this video, we're going to do a live demonstration of implementing Cloud Firestore with Model View, View Model, and Live Data. First, an overview of Cloud Firestore. Cloud Firestore is Firebase's newest iteration of cloud-based data storage. The previous storage mechanism was called Real-Time Database, which essentially was a NoSQL storage for JSON documents. Cloud Firestore has several improvements around performance, queryability, and the ability to place data closer to your end user. It also comes with a different structure. So we start with essentially a root document, and then that root document can have a collection. That collection can have a series of documents. So think of a collection like an array list, a collection of objects, and then think of a, a document like an object. Now guess what? These documents can also have further collections. Consider this case where our root collection is a collection of specimens of plants. It contains documents, and each one of those documents describes a different plant. Maybe the tree in my front yard, the flower in my flower bed, something like that. Now, these specimen documents can have yet another collection of photos, and those photo collections are going to be collections of, guess what? photo documents, and those photo documents are all JSON, by the way. So when I say photo, don't think of a binary photo. Think about the metadata about the photo. But that's okay. What we can do is from these low-level documents here, we can link out to Firebase Cloud Storage where we can store things like binary objects, photos, and the like. In any case, you see we have an alternating path here, collection to document to collection to document. And you can continue to iterate on that as much as you want. So think of the analogy, a document is an object and a collection is like an array list. Now steps we're going to need to take. First of all, we'll create a Firebase project, then we'll create a root collection, then we're going to upgrade our build.gradle for some new dependencies. We'll add Google Services JSON to our Android Studio. We're going to programmatically get a Firestore instance, and then we're going to save a DTO to Firebase. One really nice thing about Firebase is that we just save a plain old DTO or a POJO or a POCO, whatever you want to call it, a plain old Java object or Kotlin object straight to Firebase. It doesn't have to extend anything. We don't have to annotate anything. We just say save. So let's take a look. First, I navigate to console.firebase.google.com, and it needs me to log in with my Google account, just as you see here, as you'll need to do as well. You see, I have some projects from previous demonstrations that I've done. You probably won't have those if it's your first time in. Let's go ahead and choose Add Project, and let's give this a name, My Plant Diary Q, and continue. And uh, sure, we'll enable analytics, not terribly worried about that. Uh, analytics account. I've already created one of these, so I'll go ahead, select it, and choose Create Project. If you don't want to do that, don't worry about it. Just skip over that. Our project is ready, so I'll choose Continue. And the first screen gives me a little introduction on how to add Firebase to my app. Note that it supports iOS, web, and Android. Let's go ahead and choose Android. It starts by asking us for a package name. Now, word to the wise, we're going to need to do a bit of work on our build.gradle. So I went ahead and opened our build.gradle. If we take a look at our application ID, that'll work as a package name. So I'll go ahead and choose copy and paste. And then app nickname, my plant diary queue. The SHA1 key is optional. We will come back to that a little bit later when we're doing Firebase authentication, but we don't need it right now for Firebase Cloud Store. Let's choose register app. Download config file. This one we have to be really careful because it, it belongs in a very specific place. So you see project, then you see app. Make sure you're in the project view and the app directory. I usually look for this proguardrules.pro. I know if I see that, I'm in the right place. So I'll choose download. Go back to my project and here's where we have to be a little bit careful. I select project and then my plant diary and app. I look for the ProGuard Rules Pro, and I know I'm in the right place. So I drag my JSON file to this app directory. Let's go ahead and choose OK. And there we go. Back to the Firebase console. Let's choose Next to go to the next step. We have to be very careful here as well, because this is where it's asking us to modify our build.gradle. We're going to need to modify two of them. So we need to add a repository, Google, add a class path, repository. Take a quick mental screen capture of this. First of all, we go to build.gradle. Let's go to the one with the period. Uh, the one with the period is the project level build.gradle. The one that says app is the app level build.gradle. So be careful, make sure you have the right one. So first, it says repositories Google. 
So, oh look, hey, we already have that. We don't need to worry about that. Next, we have a Google Services dependency. I'll click the copy on that and I'll confirm that we don't have that yet in our build Gradle. So I'll go ahead and choose paste. Notice it wants me to sync now, but hold off on that for just a moment until we've updated them all. Finally, all projects repositories. Let's see if we have Google in there, and we sure do. So that is good enough for this project level build.gradle. Now let's now go to the app build.gradle. So we have apply plugin, uh, com Android application, and com GMS. Google services. So let's take a look at what we have there. Uh, okay, looks like we need both of those. So paste and paste. I find if you follow the instructions they give you, it generally works fairly well, uh, especially around these version numbers. That's the part that always gets tricky to me. Dependencies implementation. We need Firebase Analytics. If we signed up for Firebase Analytics, if not, you might not need that step. So I paste and save and let's sync now. The next step is a handy one. When we choose next, the Firebase console is going to wait for our application to connect to confirm that everything is configured properly. I like the way they do that check and running from an emulator will work just fine. So let's go ahead and start this in an emulator. We see now once the application is started up, we receive a confirmation message that everything is wired together properly. Let's go ahead and continue to console. Let's choose database. Now we know we have a choice here. They kind of encourage us to use Cloud Firestore, which is what we are going to use. The other option is the real-time database. We won't use that, but I will tell you I have a series of videos that show how to use that with the Java programming language if you're interested. Let's go ahead and choose Create Database. We will start in test mode, for now at least, which means unauthorized read and writes are okay. We definitely don't want to do that in production, but on the other hand, we haven't implemented authorization yet either, and we will do that when we implement Firebase authentication in a later learning module. Let's go ahead and choose next. Choose our location. US Central is close to where I am, so sure, that's good. This is one of the advantages of Cloud Firestore as opposed to the real-time database. With Cloud Firestore, we can pick a region. So go ahead and choose done. Our database, we need to start a collection. Let's go ahead and choose start. We will call this one specimens and next. Now it wants us to start an initial document. We can either give it an ID of our creation or just choose auto ID. We can really put anything in here. This is just kind of an initialization step. But let's think about what we have on a specimen. So we maybe have a plant name, a string, we could say Eastern Redbud, and then we could say latitude say 39.74. That's close enough. Longitude, minus 84.51. So you see in the console we have this ability to enter things directly. Collection, document. And then these fields essentially are part of this document here. And then we can have another collection that hangs off of this document, which mirrors this presentation I showed you earlier. So we can do it with the web console. We can also do this programmatically. Let's see how to implement it in our application. I've returned to the Android perspective and just want to refresh a couple things we did in a prior video. First of all, we specified the specimen DTO, which is what we're going to save to Firebase. Secondly, in our fragment, we created the save specimen function and we have a to do on here to save this object. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to reuse the main view model that we've used previously as well, because we're using model view view model for our interaction with Firebase. So we have that referenced up above as view model. So after our scoped function has finished, we can simply say view model dot save and pass in our specimen object as a parameter. I might say, wait a minute, we, you never made a save method on the view model, and you're absolutely correct. But that's what I like about modern IDEs. I can simply hold Alt, Alt and press Enter, and we can say create member function, main view model dot save, and you see it creates the save function for us right there in the main view model. And that's great because this is where we want to do the rest of our work. One thing I'm going to fix up here while I'm here. Let's go ahead and say private, late init, var, Firestore, colon, Firebase, Firestore. Now you notice it redlines on me. Another thing I like about modern IDEs, it says, hey Brandon, you didn't add a dependency that you need in your build Gradle. Would you like me to add that for you? Yes, indeed I would. So I go ahead and press enter. After a build.gradle update, it says, okay, I know who this is now. And then we can alt enter and we can import that class and the red line goes away. 
Let's take a look at our init function. We can initialize this variable. We'll say firestore equals firebase firestore dot get instance. Then underneath that, we can say firestore dot firestore settings equals firebase firestore settings dot builder dot build. So this is the builder design pattern, which is convenient if we have something that requires a lot of options like buying a car, ordering a cheeseburger at a fancy restaurant, where we can specify those options and then build. In this case, we don't really have any options that we want to specify, but we'll leave this here in case we do in the future. A little bit of setup, and then we can go to our save function. And this is where the rest of our work is going to occur. So let's say Firestore, and we have to reference our collection first. Remember, collection document, collection document. So when we reference the collection, we give it a name. And what name is that? Well, we called our collection specimens. Take a look right there. So starting with this, which is the root, we go to the collection called specimens. We can chain these together if we want. So we can say dot document. So we're referring to a document and then we, we say dot set and we pass into that the specimen that was passed to that was passed to us. After that, we can say dot add on success listener. And after that, we can say dot add on failure listener. And from here, it's really just a matter of log dot, dot D. Uh, we'll say Firebase and then we'll say document saved. And we'll go ahead and import log.d. So we're putting in a log statement. Log statements are always a good idea. We should probably inform the user as well. We won't worry about that right now, but it would be ni nice to put in live data or an observable of some kind where, that we can attach the fragment to so that the fragment gets a notification of whether the save was successful or not. We'll discover that in a later video. Our application is loaded. You see it has a latitude and a longitude. Let's select a plant. We'll go with Eastern Red Cedar this time. Description, beautiful. Date planted, 02, 29, 2020. This is neat, this is one day of the year I get to use the 29th of February because it's the date I'm recording this. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose save. We see that we walk through the debugger and it's populating our specimen DTO. And then it goes to the save method on our view model. And this one, it kind of acts in a funny way because of how we chain these method calls together. But nonetheless, it will eventually, as we see right now, store our document. I'm going to snap a breakpoint on the on success and on failure just so we can get an idea of whether it was successful or not. And look, when we heard back from Firebase, we heard back a success message, which is great news. Now we look at Firebase and take a look. We have two items in it now. Uh, the very first one that we created this Eastern Red Bud, very simple. And then the one that we just saved, noticed Eastern Red Cedar, plant ID zero, specimen ID zero. Don't worry, we'll take care of those later. Latitude, longitude, a little bit longer because this is something generated from the device itself. In description, beautiful. We're now in the case where we're able to add uh, several items to our collection. If you take a look at this document down here, you see it has a unique identifier, and these were both generated for us. If you leave this document function call without a parameter, that's the behavior that you will get. But if you put a parameter in there, which is going to be a string like specimen one, then it will use that as the unique identifier. Now I paused the video and I made a few changes. First of all, I removed breakpoints so that we could watch this happen live without going to the IDE. Secondly, I changed my location to Washington, DC. You see the latitude and longitude is a little bit different and I've created a brand new plant. Watch what happens when I press save. Watch specifically this collection right here. So you see in just a moment, it's pretty fast. It went ahead and added the specimen one because that's what I specified in that document. Now we see I have Western Juniper. What happens if I were to change this to something else? So let's change this to Northern Pecan and say, I just planted it. Now, before I hit save, just confirm with me that you see the document is still hard coded to specimen one. So what happens when I try to save when there's already a specimen one there? I choose save and you notice that it updated. I just planted it in Northern Pecan. I did not change the date planted or the latitude and the longitude. The I just planted it in the Northern Pecan kind of highlighted there where the others did not highlight. So if we take one of these unique IDs and we pass it into this uh, document path here, it's going to refer to that and either create new if it doesn't exist 
or update if it does exist. What if we have an auto-generated ID? How do we find that out? Well, we can restructure this function a little bit because the return value of this document here is whatever unique ID was generated. I committed what we have so far to GitHub so you can see what I have. Let me go ahead and do a quick refactoring so that we can get back that document. So first of all, let's take out the document path and take it back to what it used to look like. And then we will say specimens dot document. And we're going to save this into new, a new variable. We'll just call it document. And then we'll say on the next line, we'll say document dot set. So you see we were chaining these function calls together, but we can split them up into separate uh, calls as well. Val set equals document dot set. And then we can say set dot add success listener. And we can say set dot add on failure listener. Same thing. The only difference is now we're getting back this document object. And from the document, we can get the ID. You notice that's a string. One thing that's handy about that is we could use that to update our local specimen DTO to say, hey, I now have a unique identifier. To do that, though, I do need to change it from an int to a string, um, just like so. And we'll, take, and we'll make the default boom, boom, like so, because you note the unique identifier that we get back from Firebase is not a number, but indeed it is a string. And back to our main view model, we can say specimen dot specimen ID equals document ID. This isn't going to do anything to Firebase, but it will at least let us know we have a local copy of that unique ID. Let's take a look. The application's loaded. Southern Bush Honeysuckle, description, a bush in my front yard. They plant it again. Let's watch what happens when we choose save. Uh, first of all, show our current state of Firebase. You notice we have three items in our database. I choose save. The debugger breakpoint hits, so I go ahead and choose F8. And now let's see specimen document ID. What's in our document ID? BX, 5K, 937, so on and so forth. And we'll go ahead and choose F9. And what do we have? BX, 5K, 937, so on and so forth. And here we go. We see a bush in my front yard. And now we have a reference to that in our specimen object as well. One thing I might do as I look at this, might have been a bit smarter to put that in the on success listener. We could play around with that, but either way you see that we're able to either specify an ID or get a generated ID, receive that generated ID, and then use that ID to go back and update our record. As always, I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Check out the source code on GitHub. Thank you.